Well, hello and welcome to the skating lesson recaps the 2021 World Figure Skating Championship men's event. And I'm Dave Lees. I'm Jonathan Byer. Drum roll, please. Yes, and today we're thrilled to welcome 1996 World Figure Skating Champion Todd Eldridge. Todd, welcome back to the skating lesson. Thanks, guys. Good to see you guys. All right, Todd, you uh, are at the same rink in California with Nathan Chen. I'm sure you have seen him over the last, you know, several months. Did you expect him to skate as well as he did this weekend? Um, I'll say yes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, he's he's one of those skaters that he really rises to the occasion. Um, you know, he could have an off day in training or, you know, an off month or whatever. And, you know, he would just come back and he really turns up at a notch, you know. I mean, he's one of those skaters that, and especially after, you know, the mistake in the short program, I, I just, you know, there's that second level that he has that he takes himself to. And, you know, he turns that on, he turns that switch and he's, he's in go mode and he's going to go out there and do, you know, do his best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you saw him, you know, behind after the short and then to, you know, jump, you know, 40 points over Yuzuru in the free, 30 points ahead overall. What do you think he needs to focus on for next season? I mean, do you, if you were in his position, would you focus on adding anything? Would you just want to stay healthy? I mean, how do you, what do you do in his position? <laughs> I, I think the, the biggest thing, the biggest things for him are going to be as, as few distractions between now and, you know, next season and, you know, that he can do just to continue whatever he's been doing. Obviously it's working, <laughs> you know, when you, when you have scored 322 points, I mean, something's working right. So, I mean, he's doing what he needs to be doing and, and uh, you know, stay healthy. I mean, really that's, that's the key to it all, you know, manage, managing his, his season, managing his off season, managing all of that stuff is probably their biggest challenge in making sure that he's healthy and, you know, he's firing on all cylinders when seasons kicks off and, and he's setting up so that, you know, January into February is his peak time, uh, you know, for a, for his skating, for his confidence, for all of it. You know, I mean, that's, I mean, that's really it. I mean, it comes down to that. I mean, he's, he obviously has shown that, you know, undefeated for the last however many years at, at this point. So, I mean, he's shown that he's, He's very consistent and, he, and he's, you know, as long as he's healthy and he's good, he's going to go out there and do what he needs to do and do his job. So, you know, it's, it's at this point, do it, continuing to do that and forcing the other guys to figure out what do I need to do to beat it? I'm, I'm intrigued to get your opinion, Todd, because obviously with this short program error, everyone's been talking about 2018 and blah, 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 blah. If you were either Nathan or Roth in this position, would you still be going for that ultimate difficult technical content in the short for next year or would you err on the side of caution knowing how much you can make up in the free you know it, it's hard it's hard to say because it comes down at that point to the skater and how they're feeling with those specific elements you know i mean does he feel better with a flip and a toe does he feel better with a lutz and a flip you know how are they going in training i mean a lot of that comes from what you're doing in your training every day i mean is he training it every day is he automatic every day yeah i made a mistake at, at this event but, you know, he came back and he still won it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you don't want to go there and and try and have a repeat of what happened in 2018 and, and go all out and try and, and get more points than everybody and they can't catch you. Because in, in the short, as everybody in the, the famous saying goes, I mean, you can't win it in the short, but you can lose it in the short. I mean, I know that personally myself. So, I mean, it, it's one of those things that it comes down, I think, to him going and doing what he feels most confident in doing. Because, again, he's – he has that firepower in the long program technically that is just so hard to beat. I mean, you got, you got user is going to have to go back in my opinion and work on the quad. Let's again, get that in there. And, you know, to be able to keep up with, you know, his technical ability. I mean, it's just, it's so hard. I mean, he's, he's done that since he kind of started pushing the envelope with doing all the quads in, in a program, doing the sows and the toes and the flips and the lutz and even the loops. You know, I mean, he's forced everybody to up their game. And, and I mean, he's been that kind of, you know, I guess, person that has transcended the entire sport into an entirely different era. And, and you know, I mean, he's a generational skater where, you know, you don't see somebody like that come around hardly ever. And, you know, he's one that he's around and, and it's just forcing everybody to up their game. And, and 
they're going to have to go back to the drawing board and go, okay, what do we need to do? How, how can we beat this? How can we compete with this? You know, I mean, when you're 30 points behind and you're doing well, I mean, yeah, Yuzu didn't skate well, but even still, I mean, a lot of the skaters are doing pretty well, but you're 30 points behind. You got to come up to, to that level. It's hard. Yeah. In terms of user, he spent a lot of time talking about the quad axle in terms of what he wants to add. How realistic do you really think that is? I mean, we didn't see him practice it here. He spent a lot of time talking about it in his interviews, but we didn't actually see it on the ice. He said that he was practicing it or planning on including it until days before, you know, which seemed to contradict other reports that, you know, people were hearing and how realistic do you think it is? And is it worth the risk to his body? Do you think at this point in time? You know, I, I mean, he's, he's what, 26, I think, something like that. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it, as, as you get older, unfortunately, I know that too. I mean, it, it's much more demanding. It's much more difficult um, to, and to up your game like that. Um, not only just maintain, but up your game. I mean, I, I think, sure, it's great. If he wants to get it done and be the first person to do it and whatever, I mean, he's got all these other accolades and he's won everything else under the sun multiple times. So, I mean, it, it's, it's not that, you know, those are the most important things. I mean, if he has this, I want to be the first quad axle guy too, not only two-time Olympic medalist and, you know, Olympic champion, whatever, but, you know, great. That's, that's a great goal to try to achieve. However, is it the greatest thing at the expense of maybe just training other things and being consistent and being ready to go against, you know, Nathan? And I mean, I mean, you look at it, I mean, sure. It's not just those two guys who are competing, but they're the biggest rivals and they're the, they're kind of the top of the game. I mean, and you got Yuma that throws himself in there at 17 and he's like, yeah, I'm on the podium. This is crazy. Um, which was awesome. <laughs> but, um, you know, I mean, it's really down to those two guys for the most part that they're going to battle it out. You know, I mean, it's the battle of the Bryans. It's the, you know, it's, it's those guys that, that everybody's going to be looking towards, you know, if somebody else gets in the mix, they get in the mix, but it's really those two guys that are going to be battling it out in my opinion for, for a gold medal in, uh, you know, in Beijing. And it's really interesting because, especially in figure skating fandom, there has been much hysteria about the PCS judging in the men's event. I personally found it to be an embarrassment of riches because I thought, especially in the top seven, everyone had interesting programs, everyone was performing as well as doing difficult jumps and all this sort of stuff. But for better or for worse, I think as you're talking about Nathan's technical content, the point is, even if someone's getting three or four more points in PCS, it's not really doing anything to, to level that playing field now that there's such difficulty out there. Right. Well, I think, I think they had talked about, um, the ICU had talked about like bringing back down the, the point values for some of the quadruple jumps and trying to level that playing field a little bit, which uh, I'll say I agree with, but I don't agree with. Only from the standpoint, if you're that good, <laughs> You know, it's like Roger Federer. He goes and he wins every tournament for a number of period of years. And, you know, he's just that good. Like, mm -hmm. let him be that good. You know, mm -hmm. let the other people come up to his level. You know, I mean, it's just that's the way it is. I don't, I don't think you need to, I don't want to say dumb down the sport, but like take the sport down from what it, what it could be. I mean, just let it be, you know, and, and let them go out there and do their thing. I mean, I, I, I got to tell you, if, if Yuzu goes and lands a quad axle, I, I don't even care if it's a terrible landing. I'm going to give it a plus five. <laughs> it's the first person that's ever done it. I'm actually going to try and see if we can find a bonus point here or there <laughs> to try and mm. throw into it because it's just something that's never been done. So, I mean, those kind of, you know, moments, those kind of things should be special and should have that, like, if you're doing, like, it even could be added into the system. Let's say if you've done a jump or a thing or something that no one has ever done before, here's a bonus point. Here's a bonus, you know, 10 points, whatever it may be you know, to throw in there. I think it would be very interesting to do that because then you would see other people trying stuff, um, you know, and, and I think there also comes the, is it, an, is it worth the risk? Is it worth the injury? Is it worth, you know, that kind of thing? I mean, inherently any sport, if you're pushing the envelope, you know, of, of trying to get better and trying to, you know, jump higher, do this, do that, you know, no matter what your sport is, there's, there's going to be risk of, you know, injury. I mean, it's just the nature of the beast of, of sports and, and, you know, I mean, we all accept it when we sign up for this gig and, and we go and we, we take part in sports. We know we're going to have injuries. I mean, it's just the way it is. Um, but uh, yeah, I, 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 the PCS is, is 
like you say, I mean, the difference between, let's say, Nathan and, you know, the guy who came in fifth, sixth, seventh, it's not a huge difference. I mean, it's it's a difference, but it's not a huge difference like the technical side is. I mean, you see 125 points for Nathan and, you know, 90 points for somebody else. It's just it, you, it, you can't make that up on the PCS side. There's just no 30 point gap. But it's interesting because like, <clears throat> for instance, I always preferred your skating over some of your competitors because you were bringing technical content and an artistic sensibility to your program. So what was so nice about that with under the 6-0, I mean, for better or for worse, they were at least more even seeming. Do you know what Correct. I mean? So that, that well-rounded was always rewarded. Yeah. I mean, so a, I think a five nine is a five nine is a five nine. It doesn't matter. You right. can't, it's not like you got a five nine plus a little extra <laughs> like it just it yeah. was the score you know it didn't matter right. everybody else could get a 592 you know so it it uh yeah I, I i see where you're saying i mean it, yeah for sure i mean they're on that side of things i mean that would be the pcs side but again on the on the technical side if it was a 58 if it was a 59 i mean yeah it was much closer you go the you know back in the day you give the 5859 or you go the 5958 you know and right. it, it, the winner is based off of the second score. I mean, here, the winner is always based off of the technical score, not the component score, for sure. Nine out of 10 times, I'll say. Um, yeah. So it is different in that respect, where the winner could be based off of their, you know, their composition score as opposed to the technical score. Yeah, uh, do you, I do think that it would be probably better for the ISU to recalibrate the components and the weighting of that than to try to bring down quad points. And I think every, at a certain point, you points it to mean something right you have to have a value for a lutz that's recognized right, oh, I think right, right. From year to year it's uh but i want to talk to you about the u.s men and the three spots in neville horn and i was thinking that you might be someone that knows a little bit about this you have an athlete you know in the game um you know where yarrow is someone who's supposed to have citizenship he would be someone potentially that could be sent to neville horn do you have any uh idea what place he would actually you know, he or Vincent would have to get, and I think, and do you have any, know how they're going to pick, you know, who goes to Neville Horn this year? I don't, I mean, our, our, I mean, Yarrow in, in, you know, speaking about Yarrow, I mean, in our situation, it's, it's a waiting game for us to, you know, it's getting his clearance, which they've stated, you know, in emails that is supposed to be forthcoming in May. And then it comes down to, he's in the line for his citizenship. And it's kind of a waiting game on when that may come through. You know, we're keeping our fingers crossed that, you know, he's, he's gotten through several stages of the process. And there was one stage where he was going to have to go do certain tests or certain things that he doesn't have to do because he'd already done it for his green card and everything else. So that kind of moved things along a little bit faster, which is great. Um, you know, so we're really, you know, hoping that, that he gets that and he can get kind of at least on the track of, okay, I've got my citizenship. I'm good. Here we go. Now we can go just do our thing and skate and, you know, hopefully get our points and hopefully get our score and, and, and start to kind of chip away because, I mean, it doesn't come down to just nationals, as you know, I mean, you know, he could go skate great at nationals and come in second to, you know, Nathan and still not make the team, you know, a la Ross minor. So, I mean, it, it comes down to, you know, going into the summer, hopefully having that, being able to get some possible international experience, you know, with challenge skates, with Neville Horn, like you say, you know, those kind of things. Um, you know, I think it would be awesome if, if we were in that boat and we could get to do those events, you know, have the opportunity to do those events because, you know, if he goes and showcases like he did at nationals and kind of gets himself, wow. he's already in the, in the conversation, but if he really gets relevant in the conversation based on his, you know, citizenship status, then, you know, it, it gets even better for us. So, I mean, that's, it, everything banks on that. So it's, it's kind of waiting for that to happen. And then we can really make a plan to what do we need to do? Where do we need to go? And, you know, I mean, that's talking to us figure skating and, and Mitch Moyer and stuff and, and just saying, Hey, what do we need to do to get him in the right place so that he's at least in the same conversation as, you know, Vincent and Tomoki and all the other guys that he's going to be competing against for the other spots on the team. You know, I mean, Nathan, sure, he's going. <laughs> we know that. It's not going to be a question there. <laughs> so, Do you know if they're going to continue this Challenger series? I mean, I, I would imagine they would be for the unforeseen future if, you know, as was with a virtual because we don't know what the pandemic is going to bring with the next, you know, four months. And Yeah. 
it's I, I I don't know. I mean, they're, you know, I mean, they came up with this virtual series thing that they did for the other kids that, that weren't going to compete at nationals. And so, I mean, I'm sure they're trying to kind of figure out if things go back to normal, what they can do, what's possible, you know, and, and again, if they can't, then what, what do we have to do to try and at least get some of these people like in Yaros instance, get them out to do some international experience. I think, I think a great step forward was the fact that worlds did happen. You know, I think that's awesome. And, and the fact that that did happen allows for, okay, we were able to make this happen. It was able to come off really well and, you know, let's keep the ball rolling. Numbers are down. Everything is moving in the right direction for having a normal type season coming up. So I think some of the indicators will be what happens with some of the summer competitions, you know, what happens with some of the other countries, do they start offering, you know, competitions again, do they start doing things. I, I you know, I, I hope that we get to that point and there are challenger events and there are, you know, international, you know, events out there that these guys can go do and get some points and start, you know, getting that experience and, and just competing again. I mean, when you think about it, it's been the people that haven't done either nationals or worlds it's been over a year since everybody's competed. Like, it's crazy to think that that's the case, you know? So, I mean, it, it, it's everybody, I think is just fingers crossed and hopeful that we can at least move towards, you know, that concept going into summertime. What is the monitoring situation like before worlds? Cause I, I, I was struck when Vincent, uh, Zoe posted on Instagram that he had a really bad ankle injury over the last two months and he didn't know if he was going to be even able to skate. And I thought, wait a second, <laughs> like we do have alternates. Uh, right, you know, right. I, I think, you know, it's certainly a risk. I remember Rachel Flat was fined uh, one year by US figure skating for, you know, not sending an alternate. So what is that process like before Worlds? Could they actually pull um, for one if they were injured? I, I think some of it comes down to, you know, the athlete and the coach having communication with us figure skating saying, look, Hey, we have a little ankle injury. I mean, he's right down the street from them. So, you know, we have an ankle injury. We have some issues going on, you know, make sure you, and, and as a coach and skater contact, whoever the alternate is the first alternate and say, get back on the ice, get, get ready. Cause we may or may not be able to go. I mean, that's at least courtesy to be able to do that. I mean, yeah, you always want to have in your mind that you're going, but there's always the potential that maybe you can't. And maybe you're not ready to be able to do it. So, I mean, just, just as, you know, your own thought process of what you feel you can do. And then the courtesy of what's best for the country, what's best for the next athlete, you know, and, and that kind of thing. I think you have to play all those things out and, and just kind of make everybody aware. And I, I mean, typically that's usually the way it goes. I mean, sometimes you just think I can get through it. I can fight through it. And then you don't have anything to say, but I, I, I still think it's, it's smart to, at least have that person training and ready. I mean, it's, it's their responsibility as the first alternate to do, to be doing that anyway. So, uh, cause there's always that situation. I mean, it could be weeks before, two weeks before, one week before, but like, uh, uh, you know, somebody broke something, somebody did whatever, and they can't go. You, you get the call, uh, you're going. So it's like, uh, then you're like, Oh God, I haven't been skating. So <laughs> you want you don't want to be in that situation. For someone like Jason, how big do you think it is for him to at least, he put out a quad, it wasn't completely rotated, but he actually did attempt it at a Worlds, which in the past, he, I believe he popped in 2019, or at least it wasn't successful. So for someone like Jason, how big of a mental hurdle do you think that is moving forward? It's huge. <laughs> it's huge. I mean, I know personally when, when I landed my quad at that my first event and it was always the question going into everything. I mean, he'll still have that question going into every event he does, you know, are you doing it? Is it happening? Is it this, you know, or do you have more than one, all that kind of stuff. I mean, he'll have those questions. He knows that. Um, I mean, I know Brian and Tracy will know that too. So, um, you know, it's just going to be there and, and, uh, but it's such a huge mental hurdle to do it, to try it, to stand up on it. I mean, sure. It wasn't perfect, but you know what? It, it's that kind of, monkey off your back, like release of, okay, mm -hmm. I've, I've got the experience of at least standing up. Now let's push, let's get it done. Let's be more consistent with it and, and get it fully rotated. Um, yeah, it's such a huge hurdle. I mean, cause it, it, it's a big thing, especially for somebody like him who's known for everything else being great. And you know, that one thing that's just kind of holding him back from breaking through. I mean, he's still coming in seventh place at the world championship without it. I mean, it's, it, 
to me, if he could get a sow, get a toe, get both of them, I mean, he moves up mm -hmm. so high at that point into metal contention just with very limited number of quads. I mean, you look at Yuma. I mean, Yuma did a sow and a toe. I mean, you know, he did a couple of them, but I mean, he still had that in the program. He didn't have more than that. And he's second on the podium. I mean, that puts him in that conversation of being right there to be able to be a medalist at the Olympics if he gets a couple of quads in his program. I mean, holy cow, that's going to be, in my opinion, that'll be his summer. <laughs> his, okay, we got this hurdle over with. Now let's capitalize on it and push and keep going. And here we go. Let's, let's get it going. He's one of those skaters that I, I mean, it just seems so clear that an international judging panel, again, wants him to succeed. I think yeah. that it seems an international appreciation for what he's doing. So I think if he just gives them an inch, they'll shove them right up to the top if they're able. But I guess the idea that, oh, maybe they're doing it over the summer and they're going to work on this. But of course, because it's been such an endless conversation, right. I think we all started to doubt it would happen. But I thought seeing yeah. this just sort of made him it's seem that, more of a grown up. Almost yeah, it's that way. little, it's that little tiny breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Then I think he needed to like, it all of a sudden it like, it was like, ah, it's there, it's there. I was like, Oh, it opened the door just a little bit. Now it's going to be, you know, shoving it open. Here I go. You yeah. Know? So okay. I think once he lands it like clean in a program, it's gonna be like, wow, here I go. And I think that's going to be that moment. He had that little bit. It's open a little ways and it just needs to open it completely and run right through it. So, yeah, no, I, like you say, I think um, having, uh, you know, an international panel really look at you and, and respect the incredible work. I mean, he is by far, in my opinion, you know, I mean, Nathan is great and he does awesome skating and wonderful things. There's just a, a, a little different quality to what Jason does and brings to that. I think that, you know, takes it up even another, another notch. And I get it too. He's, he's able to do that a little bit better because he's not throwing the technical at, you know, that, that all the other guys are doing. So he can really focus on, on those fine tuned little things and make those that much more because he's not trying to conserve that energy like you need for five quads in a program you know mm. for someone like jason i'm curious who is doing the other stuff in the program that is hard you know we've only seen him add it in at the big events you know when he's in peak shape i'm curious is that you try to put in a quad when you're older was that something you were able to do in the program every day or would you have to already be doing a base program to add it in when you're already in very good shape. You know, I think for Jason putting it in the program, it'll be important for him to do it and then not pop and actually go for it and land it at like a skate America. And, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, that's for sure. I mean, he's he's gonna need, if, if the end game is to make it to the Olympics and have, uh, you know, be in metal contention, it, it's going to skate America. It's going to all these other events and, you know, some of the summer competitions and doing it, trying it and, and landing it. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to be the biggest thing. I mean, I, you know, I landed a few in my career and that was, that was kind of it. I wish I had pushed myself sometimes, you know, at that point to do it more. Um, but it, like you it, the old system didn't reward that the way the new system can, you know, even if you try it and you fall, whatever. Okay. But it doesn't detract from the points you can get for the other things. I mean, if you missed it and you fell on it, and you still did everything else okay, it still was kind of like, mm, I can't give them a 5.8. I got to give them a whatever, you know. So the points thing is is a little bit different with the, the risk reward now, as opposed to, you know, back in the olden days of the 6.0 system. <laughs> well, what do you make of Yuma? I mean, he came here, uh, you know, we didn't consider him a, a top three. I was thinking he was going to be somewhere fourth through sixth-ish coming into these world championships. And I think, you know, he surprised us. I, I, I think he arrived, I think a bit earlier than, uh, you know, he certainly has had quite a season. There was one competition he was, you know, bawling in the kiss and cry, you know, extremely injured and upset and, you know, devastated and really has just risen uh, throughout the year. You talked about him doing the easier quads, but nailing them. Do you think he's someone that could add, you know, more quads and really become a huge threat for next year? I think so. Uh, I mean, not knowing, you know, what other quads he's working on. Um, but I, I mean, the ease that he does, like, and I was actually speaking to one of my students about this, like when I said, watch his quad toe, because it's so big and it's such a beautiful jump. The timing is great. He's actually opening 
towards the end of the jump to just kind of like float down. I think it's, it just looks that easy. It's not like he's just getting there. It's like, okay, that was a quad toe. No big deal. Like, and <laughs> I mean, I, I'm super impressed with his skating. I mean, I competed against his dad, which is hilarious, but um, you know, it, it's just like to watch him. He's just that breath of fresh air that he brings, you know, it's, he's 17, he's young, he's whatever. It's the, I'll say it's the Terrell Lipinski kind of situation of, Oh, somebody, a little upstart coming in and just out of nowhere, just skating great and doing all these wonderful things. And it, it really, um, you know, he, he, he just, it's fun to watch. And it's, 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 it was actually more fun to watch too afterwards when they were doing the, the medals and stuff like that. He kept looking over it at Yuzu, like, am I doing yeah. it right? Am I doing, you know, <laughs> am I doing the right thing? Am I, <laughs> that was very funny to watch. <laughs> yeah, I think for him, the biggest thing is, you know, getting the programs that are showing him off, you know, artistically more and getting sure. comfortable performing in front of an audience. Those are all things that hopefully he'll have the opportunity to do. But yeah, I have I mean, to it, say, it, oh, sorry, Todd. No, I have to say, I thought, I thought his short program was one of the most entertaining. I thought Jason's was just out of this world, but I thought yeah. Yuma's short program in particular, and then Kevin's, I think. I don't know, they just yeah. had an energy to it that was completely infectious and I was with it, where I thought yeah. maybe the free was just a little bit like generically lovely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it, was, had... it was, the long was nice, like you say. It, I mean, he did lots of wonderful things and it was nice but it didn't, it didn't take it to that next level. And that may be a, a, a maturation kind of situation where he needs a little bit more time to mature into, you know, making all the movements a little bit more like Shoma or, you know, uh, Yuzu or those kind of guys where they finish everything off just a little bit more and they have a little more connection to all of it. And, you know, I mean, the short program, it's a little bit easier to do that because, you know, you got three jumps and a couple spins and a full work. So, I mean, it's, it's a little bit easier to get through it and, and, bring that energy to it you know you've got to save that energy a little bit when you're in your your free program because there's just so much going on there's so much to do right. yeah no he i loved his short program it was great he's also competing against he's in a relatively artistic field i mean you have nathan and yuzu who both have a lot of presence and gravitas on the ice and then you have shoma and you know uh, mikhail alia who are i mean sir Koyada. Koyada. I just combined <laughs> names for a second. Uh, <laughs> Mikhail Koyada, who are, uh, you know, really artistic, artistic skaters. So it'll be curious to see if they can really kind of work that facial engagement. I think that will come from performing. But I think that he's someone who, you know, second, you know, is huge going in. And if he can keep pushing, that will be a very interesting thing. What do you make of Shoma Uno here? Because I have to tell you that watching his practices this week, it was one of the most infuriating things. I think I've watched. <laughs> he allows himself to fall on the ice and just kind of like lay there <laughs> and oh, hang wow. out. And as a coach, I think I would lose my mind, right? Like if he just, it seems like he has so much talent and so much ability, but the the 100% focus doesn't always seem to be there. Yeah, I'm I'm sure that's one of Stefan's biggest things <laughs> is, you know, I mean, he's he's known for, you know, obviously being a wonderful skater and very very detailed in in his skating. So to have somebody that kind of loose and whatever, I mean, it it can be good cuz you can play off okay, I fell and whatever, but it can also get to the point of, well, okay, we got to, you know, focus here a little bit and, and bring it back in and, and just go out there and make sure it happens and get your work done, you know, and not let it get too floppy and crazy. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I've seen that from him before in other events and stuff. And that's something that if you do that a little bit too much, it can work its way into your skating a little bit. Like you land something good, but you're not really engaged in it and energized with the landing and it may just woo, get away from you and you all of a sudden fall out of nowhere. You know, so, I mean, that that's something I'm sure he'll have to kind of pay attention to over the next year and, and just, you know, keep his focus all the time, which is hard, but, you know, you got to do that it. Curse almost of being too talented that he knows that he can kind of <laughs> bluff his way in competition. Like, what is Christopher Bowen? What was he like? So that, <laughs> <right>. well, <laughs> yes. I mean, you take the perfect example. I mean, Chris could just go out and go Woo, and not really care about anything and just throw off a triple out, triple toe out of nowhere and, and not care. And, you know, it was always perfect because just like you say, that talented, you know, and uh, but when it when it comes down to pressure and stress time and, and you know, making sure it happens, that doesn't work, you know, <laughs> and it, it, it's not going to play out in, in the end for that. And he's going to have to bring it back in and focus and, and make sure he's, you know, crossing all his T's and dotting his I's and, 
you know, not just kind of, oh, it's cross sort of. Yeah, it's sort of like a selective focus thing though, because I always find his performance energy Mm -hmm. so intoxicating in a way and his step sequences are so powerful and nuanced and and so for I would think that that takes such an immense amount of focus and concentration and so then for him it's almost like he's um like preparing for impact and the whole body just goes limp at times (laughs) and just kind of gives up on the landings in particular although I thought this was for considering what he's done in the past, I felt this does seem like maybe there's some glimmer of hope with Stefan, perhaps. He seemed a little yeah. more organized in the free skate than we've seen him before. Yeah, I think I think maybe in the past he might have just let it go. If some, some things had gone wrong or not quite right, it would have just uh, kind of dwindled. I think he was able, and that might be Stefan's influence of being able to kind of reel them in and be like, don't make silly mistakes because you're just kind of letting loose, you know, stay with it, stay with it to the end kind of thing. And, and, you know, I mean, that's, that's something that Stefan was, you know, great at too, obviously. Right. Wouldn't have a track record if he wasn't. <laughs> yeah, Stefan was talking to him about not going for the quad triple in the short, which has been something that he has really struggled with despite having all the ability to do a quad toe and all the ability to do, all these, you know, different combinations that he can do into an oiler, you know, into a triple flip, or he really struggles with focusing and getting that quad triple. I don't know how many quad doubles he has done in his career, but. You know, it's interesting. It, I mean, some of it as a, as a coach watching it, and you know, um, the way he lands his first jump, his shoulders are very open. Mm-hmm. He does that on a lot of his jumps, but on a, yeah. on a, on a combination jump, when it gets that open, if you don't have great balance and perfect balance to get it back a little bit to go again, you just got to kind of roll with it. And it's really hard to make a triple happen when you're just kind of rolling with it and jumping. It's not, it's not, you're not really controlling the jump. The jump's kind of controlling you at that point. So you're just along for the ride and going, uh, is this going to be a triple or double? I don't know. I better do a double. So, um, you know, some of that. Why is he opening his shoulder? Is it something in his jump? Like he's done it forever. And it's, yeah, I don't know. I mean, some, some skaters do it. I mean, I, I, it's just some people teach it. Some people don't. And, you know, I've seen it in skaters that I've taught, you know, they just land that way. I'm like, no, 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 get back over here. Cause you uh, combination. It's much better to go from here. I mean, you don't start the first jump from here too. So it's, you know, some of that is a technique thing. And, and, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, not knowing his, training habits every day what he what he works on what he does um i mean that's at least what i see that you know why the the quad triple would be sometimes good and sometimes not gonna happen right <laughs> what do you think of mikhail kolyada because he might be the most pure skater of the entire bunch but it seems like his head continues to be kind of the one area that holds him back i think if you look at you know these world championships and they talked about adding two quads. They pulled one out. It was probably a smart decision. And then, you know, in the free, the first half was amazing. And the second half, he really seemed to tighten up. So, you know, what's your... Yeah, I, you know, I, he's, he's a wonderful skater. I mean, he does really some amazing things. Um, you know, I mean, when he does, I, I'd say his quad lutz is probably one of the best in the business. I mean, it's just, it looks so easy. Um, obviously, he didn't do it there. But, I mean, it is, it's one of those jumps that just could be great. Um you know, I, it's funny that, I mean, with being with Mission, it, there's there's always kind of, and I think this is one thing that Mission has always done with, you know, back to Yagudin days and Pushenko days and, you know, Romanov days, is getting them ready for the biggest day, you know, and, and I don't think for them this year was the biggest day. I think it was, let's get, let's get ourselves back into good shape. Mm-hmm. But we know that it's going to take another year to be where we want to be here and physically to to show our best stuff, you know, for the Olympics. And, and um, you know, he, he was always very good at that with the other guys that he worked with that I competed against. Um, so I, I, I kind of want to say that's where they're at with it is let's go have a good showing and then let's get home and, and get it here. You know, I mean, he's got he does have a lot of work to do there, but that comes through your training. You know, if you're confident in your training, you're skating well, you know, then you know, you're going to go out there and deliver nine out of 10 times. So, um, yeah, I mean, he, he's a wonderful skater. I mean, very, and like you say, I mean, uh, that all of the guys in the top six or seven are a little different, which mm-hmm. is great to see because this system doesn't lend itself to different so much. It, it tries to make everybody similar because it's all about points, 
but it's nice to kind of see that. It's a little refreshing actually to see it because everybody is a little bit different and everybody's showing a little different style and a little different this. So it, it's nice that, that that's kind of found its way into this system. And, and uh, you know, I mean, he's just that very elegant and very, you know, just finished and refined skater. Um, you know, I'll say even along the lines of, you know, back in the day, I think of Victor Petrenko and, you know, he had that, uh, uh, you know, aura about him when he was on the ice and that <laughs> presence, um, you know, and, and, you know, Kurt was very different. He was just kind of a little looser, you know, Shoma like, and, and so, I mean, everybody had their own little thing going on and, and you're seeing a little bit more of that now, so which is, which, you know, maybe it's just choreographically the music all worked out that way and whatever, but it, it's, it's nice to kind of see that. Yeah, I'll definitely be curious to see what they do stylistically going forward, which Mishin is not known for, but he does have a skater that is more <laughs> classical for once that, I mean, he didn't right. raise him in the beginning, but, uh, you know, we did see him, you know, training the quad lots and the quad sal. He was supposed to do it in an earlier competition and then he had COVID and then, you know, right. getting ready for the worlds, I think at the last minute wasn't quite ready. So I think he's someone that will benefit from getting it out quicker, but I think that you're right that they already made so many steps forward. I mean, he was the, the world champion in popping, I think two seasons yeah. ago. So, uh, <laughs> you know, to get through that hurdle, but it will, I, I don't know if someone like him, it'd be interesting to see what would happen to him in an Olympics, right? Like, I don't think he is someone that would benefit from being ahead after the short program, but no. maybe coming from behind would. Yeah. Put him in, put him in like fifth place, something like that. And then let him go out there and just fire away and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's I'm intrigued. You see a skater like Jason or someone who they're not expected to do well, and they always wind up in the mix, even just yeah. doing what they can do. And other guys will do it well. Make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Do what you do well, and then let the other guys make the mistakes. I mean, absolutely. And his his GOE on those quad toes in the free skate, I think, were the highest the judges were giving to anyone for any jumping passes. Like it was pretty yeah. incredible to me. And again, even though there were those errors in the second half this is still better than he's oh, ever yeah. done mentally right. in this sort of way, I think. Right. I was intrigued um, if we thought it was maybe just a, a mental hesitation in the short program with that turn in between the combo to, as someone who has not done a quad combo, <laughs> I was like, oh, it looks like it should have been fine. <laughs> but <laughs> but he, he did take that turn. And I didn't know if that was almost him trying to get his bearings yeah. again or every i mean at that point everything happens so fast i mean it, it it's just like kind of that reactionary kind of situation where if it if you feel it it's not going to get enough torque to get that off it's like 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 with shoma i mean it gets a little bit ahead of you and it's like okay do i do a double maybe i can pull a double maybe i can't or maybe i gotta just do a turn and get back over and go for it and, and i'm sure i mean that's such a split second reaction that yeah you know you know, you don't even have time to think. It's just your body's doing it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, what did you make of the other men? You know, you have Kevin Amos here. You have Semenenko, Junior Chow. Who else stood out to you in the men's event? Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, Kevin Amos is always exciting because, and, and he's one of those kind of guys that if he goes and he puts everything out there and does it really well, uh, it's it's great. And it's it, it's exciting, you know, and, and he has a... a a good presence and, and really a lot of fun with his skating. Um, I mean, he could be in the mix. I mean, but he's got to go and deliver, you know, that's, that's been, I think, like you say about Goliada, I mean, it's, it's, it's whether or not he can get it done all together in both programs at the same time. Um, you know, I mean, he, he could be fun. He could be fun to watch, you know, over the next year, if he, if he can get his consistency up. Um, other than that, I mean, it's hard. Uh, I mean, the, just the, the top guys are so good. I mean, you, know, you see guys like you wish guys like Bo Yang would, you know, be who he was years ago. I mean, it's like, ah, where'd that go? You know, I mean, there, there's so much good stuff going on, what he can do. It's like, where is he? You know, I want to I want to so see I'm, him back in the mix. I'm, I'm curious to get your opinion on this, because a lot of times when we see uh, jumpers like him start to fail with time, I usually associate it, they're not really getting the power behind the jump maybe that they used to, but when he still takes off for these quad lutzes, they are outrageously enormous. <laughs> and yeah. then it seems to be a landing issue. So so for someone like be a, him- It could be a timing issue, you know, and I mean, I'd have to watch a video before and after whatever, what it used to be and what it is now, but 
like to see if there's a, a little change in his timing between his takeoff and his landing now, as opposed to when it was like, no big deal. <laughs> you know, he's it, it, like you say, it's, I mean, he's fast down the ice and the thing is yeah. huge. Like it just goes up in the air. It's enormous. Um, but maybe it's getting too big. Maybe it's just mm. getting away from getting, you know, tighter on the way up and not snapping as much as it used to. Um, yeah. So I, it, it would be great to see him kind of get that spark back and figure out what that is. Uh, you know, and, and as, as you get older, I mean, let's say it's six years ago or so, you know, he's landing it it, six years later doing that same jump. It, it, it morphs, it changes over time, you know, as, as any jump does. Um, so I, you know, there may be something in there that's just a little bit off and a little bit different that, you know, once they figure it out then it might start clicking again. Hmm. I'm curious to see how it'll work. You know, he's supposed to be moving to Toronto to work with Brian and Tracy. So that'll be an interesting situation. I think he's someone that if he trains with Yuzu, that would be interesting to he's, kind of see if they could, you know, he's probably going to have a lot gonna, of quadability, right? Between them, uh, that could kind of motivate yeah. each other. Have, have, you, have either of you guys been to the cricket club rink? I before? have not, but I heard that there's a bar there. So I'm curious. <laughs> 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 but maybe you'll have to go, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a little bit smaller, right? Okay. And then like, so at one end, it, there's there's glass, whatever, and windows, people look in and stuff. So like the speed that he gets, I don't know if he's going to jump out of the ring. Like he's yeah. going to have to mm, watch yeah. that because it's, it's a little smaller. And so, I, I mean, you know, it, I don't it's, know if it's, I would enjoy it's, skating without boards. I think that that would freak me out for a while. You're right. Actually, I skated at Philadelphia Skating Club for many, many years and they, you know, they had the little curb instead of boards. And it, you don't really notice it um, at all. And it, it, yeah, I didn't really notice the difference when I was there as opposed to when I went you somewhere never, else. You never like, saw a Midori Ito situation of someone <laughs> jumping out of the ring. Like, yes, yeah. I did. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, but it's a little bit easier because you can just jump off the ice, run down the side and get back on. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's right. That's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's something about like the lack of boards that freaks me out. Although I think the Philadelphia rink is one of the prettiest in pictures. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess overall, you know, what were your big takeaways, you know, in terms of, you know, from the event? You know, given given the the circumstance of this whole year and, you know, what various people have had to deal with, you know, with their training and and trying to create a way to train in an unprecedented time where things don't always work out and things aren't always the same and and you know, not competing, not traveling, not having a normal routine to your season, especially for a lot of these guys who have been doing this for a very long time and have an expectation of, okay, from, you know, August to March, here's our normal season. Uh, That didn't exist. So, you know, and we even find that with, you know, the younger kids that I work with is where's our end game right now? What do we're, what are we working towards? I mean, yeah, we're working to make our jumps better. We're making this, that, whatever, but what do we, what are we, where are we going? You know, they didn't know if worlds was even going to happen, you know? So, I mean, yeah, they're training for it, but you're training for something that's a, what if, you know, hopefully it happens. Maybe it doesn't. So it, it's, it's gotta be hard to really remain as motivated for that end game and that final event of, yes, we are going to worlds. Here's what I have to work towards. And here's my timeline to work towards it. You know, there isn't that, or there wasn't that. So, I mean, it, to watch the guys skate as well as they did. Um, and most of them, I mean, they, I mean, sure there's little mistakes here and there for a lot of the guys, but for the most part, I mean, the last group of guys really skated pretty well, you know? So, I mean, I was impressed with, with how they skated. I mean, yeah. I mean, Yuzu kind of fizzled out a little bit, whatever, you know, and, and maybe that's a lot of other things on his mind and different things going back at home and, you know, where he's from and all that kind of stuff. So I, I think, you know, but for the most part, I mean, to see the guys go out there and, and skate as well as they did, it was, it was great. And, and I think if they, if they see, yes, worlds happened. Awesome. Now we're starting to move towards the excitement of we're going into an Olympic season and the Olympics are going to happen and they're going to do this. And it's, it, now we have a timeline of what, what's going to happen from now until next February. So I, I think, there may even have been that going into this event to help kind of spark them for the last, you know, however many months, whatever, going into worlds, knowing that it was going to happen. Um, you know, I think, I think that helped at least for a lot of these guys to get in the right mindset of yes, you know, it's time to go. It's time to compete. 
it's time to get out there and get working. And, you know, again, like, like I said, knowing that that's going to move now forward for the next season and, and into the Olympics and we can keep going and keep the momentum rolling and, and, you know, hopefully capitalize on, on everything getting back to normal. I, was I thought that it's going to be so different also that they're going to have the, uh, the summer Olympics before the winter Olympics. I know back <laughs> in the day, they used to have, you know, the winter before the summer, six months apart. Right. That's going to give these, all of these athletes another boost psychologically over the summer. Yeah, just emotionally. I mean, you know, you're, you're trying to compete for the Olympics and now you see the Olympics right before and it's like, yeah, okay, this is awesome. I'm sure that's the way it was for a lot of the summer Olympians, you know, coming off of, you know, the winter Olympics just happened in February. Yes. You know, people, you know, that energy that you feel and you have as an Olympian, you know, whether it's your first time or whether it's, you know, your second or third time or however many times you've been going, uh, you know, just those juices get flowing and you get excited about it because it's that there's that energy about it and about the event that, you know, it's intoxicating and it's like, yes, okay, here I go. I've got this Olympic season, time to go, time to push, time to get really fired up and excited about it. So I think, uh, and I think they're all going to use that, you know, the, the summer games coming up to, you know, help boost, you know, their own training and their own excitement level for, you know, next February. Jonathan, you were going to say something too. Well, just this was my favorite discipline by far. You yeah. know, I mean, I, I will always remember 2018, obviously, at that Olympics had a great lineup of male skaters, many the same. But I thought like the Paris event there was the one that was so crazy that all the way down to like 16th place were super quality Paris teams. And that's that's sort of how I feel going into this Olympic cycle. There's so many great men that are both artistic and, you know, super technically inclined. I think yeah. this is just like a golden era of men skating in some ways. And it's really thrilling. Todd, I was curious to get your opinion on the spinning in the competition, because you were one of my favorite spinners. So <laughs> who were your favorite spinners in this event? Oh boy. Um, gosh, I, I mean, I, I like Yuzu spinning. I, I like the way he spins. He, he's, you know, the, the quality of the, the speed of the spin, but mm. um, I, I mean, I'll say he stands out. I mean, Jason Brown always stands out in his spins, his positions, you know, the details, everything is in the details with him. And, yeah. you know, the details, the positions, the flexibility that he has, which is unmatched, in my opinion, by pretty much any of the other guys, mm -hmm. just the positions he can get in is amazing. And, and to keep the speed in those positions is something that, you know, is very remarkable. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I, you know, I, I have the RO, I have the other kids, you know, watching guys like him doing the spins because, you know, you look at the positions, you go, okay, I want to see that. I know you're not going to be, you're not Jason Brown. So you're not going to do that just yet, but that's, that's our goal. That's what we want to look towards and, and be like, you know, mm -hmm. I want you guys to all spin like that, you know, and, and both of those guys, both Jason and Yuzu. I mean, I really, you know, their spins are really, really great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I do say <laughs> the spins make me laugh because Nathan Chen is the world champion at every single thing except for that flying camel. That <laughs> is the one. Thing. <laughs> I was, I was, I was hanging on the edge of my seat when he started to kind of teeter totter on that. Position. I'm like, oh, okay, hang on, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. Shoma has great spins as well. It's yeah. very so typically. And Keegan, so, Ke Keegan, Keegan also yeah. does some. Keegan really has a great yeah. spin, but not great position. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. His, yeah. his positions are uh, okay. His speed is incredible. He's great yeah. speed on his spins. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we forgot to talk about Keegan. Actually, we should point out that he was someone there who they were going to send for Canada. And then he came through in the free program. Unbelievably. So he, he was, he was exciting to watch. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. knowing, knowing what he has been through over the last year, I mean, with, you know, obviously he got married and then his brother passing away. And I mean, just everything that has gone on in his life, you know, outside of skating, you know, just, just to see it come together and to have him go out there and, and be able to do that. I mean, it's just, it's refreshing. It's awesome. And I'm sure it felt great, but still, I mean, there's just so much emotion I'm sure in inside of him of mm -hmm. what, this last year plus has has meant and, and been for him i just yeah i can't imagine and now they're expecting a baby it's it's you know a lot of excitement yeah. yeah he's had There's so so many emotions going on there 
He's going to get yeah. the Olympic fluff piece of all time. You know? I mean, <laughs> yeah. get there, so, Wait, yeah. rightfully so, though, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Competing uh, for the U.S. and then switching and going to Canada and trying to fight his way onto a team. And, you know, I mean, can we can we share that moment? Remember when he skated to the Hulk, like back in 2011 yes. for us? And I was like, who is this kid? And then to see him develop into such a nice champion, it's been really remarkable. Yeah, I was also yeah. thinking about no, how for the kids that could go to Neville Horn, and for us, I mean, our season of work is going to start much earlier because to the selection of who has to go to Neville Horn for each of the countries and then who gets to go is going to be a much uh, tighter battle than I think before, which I think is interesting that the ISU does it. And it's, you know, I think it's an interesting format to. Yeah, I think it's I think it's going to come down to hopefully, you know, like you say before, getting getting some events going over the summer, whatever they may be, being in good shape and showing good stuff at that point to put yourself into the conversation of we're going to select him to go or her to go or whoever to go to, you know, showcase their stuff at Nebelhorn and, you know, earn their spot kind of thing, if you will. I mean, you got to do more than just Nebelhorn to earn it, but you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's that piece of it for sure. Yeah. Todd, I'm rooting for your guy. <laughs> Me too. <There> go. <laughs> yeah. Good. <laughs> I, here's my, your guy while we're here. How did you get him to skate so consistently? Because we watched all of, I was re-watching all of his programs and people point out, you know, he'd never done like a clean program before nationals and had two amazing skates. Did you entirely revamp his training process? I mean, what went into that? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I mean, I think um, the biggest thing, you know, run throughs, of course. I mean, that was something that I always made sure I did. And we don't do per se, full on run throughs every single day, you know, and, and that's, I think something that has changed over the years, just because the demands on the body physically don't lend themselves to doing that all the time. And, you know, back in the day, sure. If you're doing your triples in a quad, you can do that. If you're doing three, four, five quads in a program, you, you're just going to injure yourself at some point, you know, the body can only take so much. So, you know, with, with the RO, it was making sure he was doing his run throughs whether it was with one or two quads and all the other triples or one quad and some triples or no quads and all triples, just, you know, the, the physical run through, you know, for patterns mm -hmm. and for, you know, layout of the program and the comfortability within your body of doing the program so that you you're on autopilot per se, when you're doing the program and then you're upping your level of energy for the jumps. Um, mm. You know, I think that's something that he kind of let go by the wayside to do some of his program sections. And then he didn't have that. I'm a little tired in the middle section after the first section. So I need to push through that moment. He always would, they say, stop, you know, and rest and then pick up again. So he felt much fresher in the middle of his program than he really is going to feel in a competition. So I think just making him get through those run throughs and, you know, I mean, he even said it, that skating to Elvis helped him with that mm -hmm. because it helped because he enjoyed it and he had fun doing it. It wasn't a program that he, I'll say dreaded, but he wasn't a program that he didn't not look forward to, you know, he looked forward to, okay, I'm going to go do my program, having fun with it. And we're going to do whatever and work hard. Uh, so I think that helped. Um, we're kind of doing that a little bit with the short program too. We're having a, a little lighter, more fun kind of short program that, uh, I, I don't know if he's revealed anything yet, but, uh, at some point we will let everybody know. And it, I'll just say it's, it's, it's fun. And actually Dave, I think we had texted a little bit about it before, yes. um, with, and that that's, that's the route we're going. So I think it's, uh, uh, it's going to be exciting. It's going it, to, it'll be very different than most of the others. Like you talk about Kevin Amos and it's, and, and Yuma and they're kind of fun and they're, you know, they bring yeah. that energy to it. And that's what we want to do. You know, I mean, Elvis has an energy to it. It's a little bit different because it's a long program, but this is going to be, it's going to be dancey. It's going to be fun. It's going to, yeah, it's hopefully going to knock everybody's socks off <laughs> as long as he does his technical. <laughs> I think the men's event was the event of the world figure skating championships this year. Thank you so much for breaking it down with us, Todd. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks.